Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I want to talk about the concept of the relationship between video editing and math. I got this message or question about if you need to be good at math to be a good video editor, and I want to make this quick topic showing you a couple ways that the two are related and all the different ways that math is involved in editing. Because usually when you think of anything creative like video or photography or art, Sometimes you just usually separate them into creative activities and then technical science activities like math and numbers, when in reality, video editing is largely all made up of different mathematical numbers and processes. And when you open up Premiere Pro in the first place, you're just going to see a ton of numbers everywhere. You have frame rate numbers, seconds, effect percentages, and amounts, and scale positions. So the short answer to a question like that is you don't necessarily need to be a mathematician. You don't need to be a math expert. You do need to know just basic numbers and how they add up and subtract and things like that. You do need to have some intuitive sense of numbers in math. And in the long answer, I want to show you some ways that the two are related and also a concept of how there's always multiple ways to do things in video editing because just like two plus two is four and eight minus four is four, there's usually multiple ways to achieve the same end result. So whenever you start a new sequence in Premiere Pro, one thing that you always see in the setting is the frame size. So in this way, the concept of ratios is important. This is the standard 1920 by 1080p, and that's a 16 by nine ratio. This is what gives it the widescreen look. And honestly, a lot of these get into much, much more complicated and technical things that have to do with monitor displays and the way technology has evolved. And it can be a lot. I, I myself, even after editing for over a decade, couldn't tell you all of the exact technical histories of frame rates and how things have evolved. But the great thing is you don't always need to know down to the very exact origin of a concept. Another concept that you'll see a lot is percentages. So just knowing your basic zero to 100% that comes in handy with opacity and strength of some effects. So this is 50% opacity all the way down to zero. And also the speed duration of a clip. This is 100% speed, but I should know that if I put it at 300% speed, that's gonna be three times as fast. So it's gonna go from 12 seconds to four seconds, as you can see here. And you can see the clip gets shorter. Another concept you'll see in a lot of effects is angles. So the rotation angle goes from zero all the way to we should know that 90 degrees is a right angle straight up and down, 180 degrees like so. Or if I go all the way to 360 degrees, we should know that makes one full rotation of a circle. And that even applies with certain effects that we add. A lot of effects work on angle amounts. So we should know that a 45 degree angle will cut across a video like this. Negative 45 degree angle will cut across a video like that. And like I was saying, since we are working with numbers in math, there's often more than one way to reach the same end result. Um, one example of that is blending modes. So if I have two clips on top of each other, and that, let's say I put one at 50%, then we'd achieve a 50% blend of these two images. However, this would work both ways. If I put this one at 50%, or if I had this one on top, this one at 100, and then put the top one at 50%, we'd still achieve the same blend between the two, especially if they filled up the, the same frame size. And if we actually go into the blending modes of the clips, such as the darken, multiply, these type of additive or lightening blending modes, another blending mode you have is the multiplicative ones, such as soft light, hard light. Uh, for example, if I put this top clip on overlay, it would be the same result as if I had put the top clip on hard light. They're both the same. You can see here. So this is happening because overlay multiplies the top clip on everything on the bottom, whereas hard light takes the top clip and multiplies everything underneath it on top of it. I'm giving you vague explanations. These all work pixel by pixel mathematically, but that's just an example of how you can achieve the same ends in different ways. And the reason that is helpful and useful to know is because a lot of video editing has to do with problem solving. And sometimes you might not be able to, especially if, if you have multiple layers stacked up against each other, you might not be able to put everything on overlay. So you might have to figure out that you should just do the top clip on hard light instead. Another way you have math involved is just your basic shapes and geometry like rectangles. And if you hold shift, we get a perfect square. 
Whereas if you don't hold shift, you can do rectangles or ellipses and ovals versus perfect circles. And you also have in your essential graphics panel uh, options to center, space things. So proportion, shape, scale, all of these things. So you don't always have to know exactly everything. Like it would be a separate topic for me to explain why the hue is in an angular 360 degree wheel rather than in color amounts and the whole concept of color science and everything. But I think I'm going to leave it at that. This is just a video to kind of open your perspective and get you to start looking at all of the different ways time and numbers and math all do incorporate into something that might traditionally be seen as a creative artistic thing like photography and video. So the two worlds kind of blend together here. No, you don't need to be an expert mathematician. However, you do need to understand some basic concepts and have an intuitive sense for how things go together. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos like how video editing and minimalism work together and all the other ones in my playlist on my channel. You can subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.